Chris here, and today I'm gonna to determine once and for all which Oculus headset is the best for Beat Saber. That went pretty smooth, how about this? I'll make you guys a deal. If I can flip this here lightsaber three times and catch it, then you have to subscribe, all right? And a one. And a two. Wow! Now don't y'all forget, we had a deal now. First of all, don't get me wrong, all these headsets are great, and regardless on which one you have, you're gonna have an absolute blast playing. What I'm really trying to check if any of the variables, such as the IPD, the resolution, the refresh rate, the tracking system, the controllers, is gonna affect my Beat Saber gameplay. So this is how it's gonna go down. I'm gonna be playing the same song 10 times on each headset. I'll be playing on the Rift, the Rift S, the Oculus Quest, the Oculus Quest with the Oculus Link, and the Samsung Odyssey Plus, because why not? I have it. Maybe the underdog will impress us, who knows. I chose to play the song Breezer since I've already played it like 100 plus times while I was making this video. So it's by far my most consistent. Also to make sure everything remains fair, every two times I play a song, I'm gonna swap out the headset. This ensures if I'm just becoming ungodly good from playing the same song over and over and over, or if I'm starting to get fatigued from playing over and over and over, that it should average out the results across all the headsets across the entire test. Also, obviously, this is all just for fun. Your results may vary based on what your computer hardware is, what cable you're using for the Oculus Link and other variables like that. This is all just my opinion from a guy that plays a lot of VR. So with that being said, let's get started. Woo! <laughs> What you're seeing fly by right now is all my completed end screens. You could pause to check it out if you'd like, but what I've done for you guys is compile all the data into an easy to read chart because I care. To kick things off, starting from the bottom to the top, to absolutely nobody's surprise, is the Samsung Odyssey Plus. What you can see here is I missed a total of 17 beats out of 3,560, and also got the lowest single score out of all my playthroughs. To my surprise, it wasn't the two camera tracking that caused the issue. It actually tracked really well, besides when the battery started to die, which is actually pretty quick, but it was more so the fact that the controllers are incredibly uncomfortable. Each controllers have two double A's in it instead of one, adding to the weight, and they're also just really bulky, making extended play a lot more fatiguing than the other controllers, and also trying to correct from a mistake and flick your wrist around real quick was difficult. Also, I kept having the battery compartment cover pop off, which is really distracting. But besides that, everything looked really good. It felt pretty good. 
Thanks to the anti-screen door effect and the OLED panels, it was definitely one of the best looking headsets on the list, so at least Windows Mixed Reality has that going for them. Up next we have the Quest connected to my computer through the Oculus Link. As you can see I only missed three beats which is already substantially better than the Samsung Odyssey Plus. The gameplay itself was pretty smooth and crispy. It was a definite improvement over playing on the Quest not connected to the PC. The controllers tracked well, however, the headset itself is not the most comfortable. The Quest itself is already pretty heavy thanks to having everything built into the front. Adding a cable tugging on it made everything just a little more uncomfortable, but this may improve when Oculus releases their official link cable, so we'll just have to wait and see when that happens. Next is the tried, true, and trusty Rift CV1. As you can see, everything performed as expected. I'm currently running a three sensor setup and only ended up missing two beats out of all 3,560. Gameplay wise, everything was as smooth as butter. And in my opinion, the Rift has the best headphones and controllers out of the rest of these headsets. However, visually wise, due to having older lenses which cause more God rays and the lowest resolution panels on this list, it was definitely a noticeable step down compared to all these newer generation headsets. That being said, I still think the Rift is a great headset. I use mine all the time, so if you can't afford to upgrade, don't worry, I think you're in a good spot. I mean, check out the results, they don't lie. Now for these next two, I'm gonna pop them up at the same time because I found the results interesting and we need to have a little bit of a discussion. So yeah, as you can see, the Quest is on top. I have the highest total score as well as my highest single round score, but I find this to be a little bit suspect because in my opinion, the Quest felt the worst out of all these other headsets. And also I missed six beats compared to the two for the Rift S, but somehow ended up with the highest total score. So what this leads me to believe is perhaps the scoring is done a little bit different and more lenient on the Quest because they knew it was gonna be on a mobile headset. So perhaps they made it more forgiving. I don't know, that's something that you know I can't prove and maybe someone else will know. But if that's the case, then just kind of take it off this list because that's in a league of its own. And then that put the Rift S on top. Now, talking a little bit more about the Quest, gameplay-wise, obviously things work pretty well. I only ended up missing six beats, but as I mentioned, it just didn't feel as good as these other tethered headsets. The gameplay itself just felt a little bit more laggy and a little bit more choppier than the rest of the tethered headsets. That might, what might have also contributed to that a bit is because I was recording in the headset at the same time I was playing, so that might put a little bit more drag on the CPU, but... Visually wise, everything looked great. The Quest has a nice OLED panel. Uh, graphically wise, of course, all these tethered headsets, including the Quest Plus Link, have a higher bump up and higher quality of graphics, but that's to be expected. Now, to my surprise, the Rift S actually impressed me a lot. I actually feel a little bit bad because before it came out, I talked a lot of shit about it. If only they had an adjustable IPD so it can work for my eyes, everything's just a little bit blurry around the outsides. In my opinion, it would have been the perfect headset. It's clearly shown by the results that everything felt super good. The controllers tracked great. I had no issues and they were super responsive. Also visually wise, it looks by far the best. Even though the panels are a little bit lower than the Quest, Quest Link and Odyssey Plus, just the pin tile arrangement on it made the screen door effect almost non-existent. And even running at only 80 Hertz compared to the 90 Hertz of some of these other headsets, it felt a lot more crispy and a lot more on point. Also what may have helped out a bit is it's by far the most comfortable headset. They did a great job with the halo design and also the overall lightness of the headset itself made it feel like it was barely on your head. That paired with the overall lightness of the Touch 2 controllers just made playing for a long period of time an absolute breeze. Now it would have been perfect if I didn't keep hitting the Oculus menu button while playing. I did it multiple times. I was also hitting it on the Quest and the Quest Link but that button didn't have a function. But on the Rift S, it kept pulling up the menu and pausing my gameplay, and I somehow recovered from that. So I don't know if that, that may just be a fault of the way I hold it myself or something, but yeah, that, that's a thing. Alrighty, so that's about all for the statistics. I also threw together this little chart for your convenience. I covered most of the points of this already, but I thought it'd help you guys out if I laid it out. Just remember, this is still just my opinion, and also this is specifically related to Beat Saber, even though a lot of this would carry over into most other games. So to break it down, in case it wasn't obvious enough, I arranged the headsets from my favorite to least favorite based on these individual categories. Also note, just because a headset is near the bottom doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It just, in my opinion, wasn't as good as the other headsets for that category. Gameplay is just overall how I felt the game was inside the headset, so like the smoothness and all that kind of stuff. As I mentioned, the Rift S was super crispy and all the other tethered headsets felt better than the Quest, which just had like a little bit of lag to it. 
visuals is not really the graphics since all of them look pretty graphically the same, especially in Beat Saber, but it's more so about the screen door effect and also god rays and stuff, so I've kind of arranged it based on that. Rift S was the clearest, Odyssey Plus looked really good, Quest and Quest Link both looked about the same, which is why they're ranked together, and then the Rift still looked okay, but the god rays were a lot more like there, and then also the lower resolution panels didn't look quite as good as these other ones. Sound is obvious, Rift nailed it with their over-the-ear speakers. Odyssey Plus also has these over-the-ear speakers, but they just don't quite go low enough, or it might have been comparable. The Quest, Rift S, and Quest Link all use that built-in, like, sort of projector speaker on the side, and it's good, but it's not as noise-canceling, and it's just not as good feeling. You don't really get the bass hitting you while you're playing, so those are all kind of, you know, obviously ranked the same. Comfort-wise, Rift S was the best with their Halo design and lighter headset. The Rift is also good. Odyssey Plus would have been better if they didn't have this really wonky thing in the front where it kind of lifts up, lifts up off your face. Other than that, it fits fairly comfortable. The Quest and Quest Link is just kind of heavy and pushes hard below my eyes, so it kind of gets tiring after a little bit. Controllers, this might be subjective, but I like the Rift controllers. I feel like they're built really heavy duty and they have kind of the perfect amount of weight. The Quest controllers are nice, but they just feel lighter and a bit more flimsy, but overall they kind of act the same as like the regular Rift controller. And the Odyssey Plus Windows Mixed Reality controllers are just god-awful for all the various reasons I stated before. Alright, so yeah, that's the end of the video. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you thought. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I try to answer them all. And with that, that's it all for today. And I'll see you on the other side. Peace.